Princess Fuse was carried over the steep valley of Toyama on the back of Yatsufusa, and eventually lowered into a large cave between the rocks. Around her, pine and cedar trees grew thickly, and the cave was dim even in the daytime, with bats flying around. But there seemed to be someone who had lived there before, as there was a torn straw mat, a sutra desk, and even a cushion. She glanced at a corner and saw the remains of a fire, with a little ash left behind. She felt reassured to think that there was someone who had lived here before me, far away from civilization. I was not the only one who had been abandoned. The princess spoke to herself sadly. For Princess Fuse, her memories were the biggest obstacle to her feelings. She had to forget the past. And so, every day, she stayed in the lonely cave and read the Lotus Sutra, which she had brought with her, over and over again. That was her only pleasure. Yatsufusa, however, was different. He would get up every morning, waiting for the dawn, and go down the valley to gather nuts, bracken roots, and other things, and feed them to the princess. He was very attentive and happy, and whenever he had free time, he would sit next to the princess and snuggle up to her. Sometimes, when Princess Fuse read the sutra aloud, he would listen intently. But the moment after she finished reading the sutra was always the hardest for Princess Fuse. Various memories that hindered her feelings would well up in her chest. By now, my father must be worried about me. My mother might still be praying at the shrine in Suzaki. Whenever she saw the geese flying in the sky, or heard the sounds at the edge of the trees, she would remember the days at the castle of Takeda. The more she thought of the past happiness, the more she felt the dullness of her present life. She had thought of killing Yatsufusa and throwing herself into the valley, but she could not do it. How old was I now? I had counted until fifteen, but after that I had lost track. Even in this state, human life was precious. I was living as if I was dead. But the princess became more and more beautiful. Her clothes were dirty and torn, but her face was bright and clear, her skin was white, and her slender waist had a dreamy grace that made her seem not of this world. But Princess Fuse soon became determined to die. She wrote a letter on the sutra desk, which was only for show. It was a farewell note to her father and mother. When she finished writing, she sighed deeply. She felt relieved to think that she could die at any time, and tears flowed. Yatsufusa, who was watching from the side, felt something in his chest and suddenly stood up and clung to Princess Fuse's chest. This was his gesture when he wanted her to read the sutra. But that day, his eyes were full of tears. The princess calmed her mind and read the Lotus Sutra quietly. Her voice was clearer than ever and gradually rose. But the only one who heard Princess Fuse's sutra was not Yatsufusa. There was a hunter who walked from valley to valley in Toyama, carrying a gun. When he heard the faint sound of the sutra, he exclaimed, How lucky! To hear a girl's voice in this deep mountain, it must be Princess Fuse. He danced with joy and followed the voice of the sutra, climbing up the peak. Who was this hunter who knew about Princess Fuse? He was none other than Takenori Kanumari. Takenori had been ashamed of failing his mission, and had disguised himself as a hunter, waiting for a chance to apologize. Then he knew that Princess Fuse had hidden herself in the depths of Toyama with Yatsufusa, 
and that no one knew what had happened to her afterwards. Teikonori thought that this was his chance to find the missing princess, Hughes, and kill the hateful Yatsufusa. He thought that if he succeeded, he could apologize to the Satami family and return with honor. So Teikonori entered the mountains of Toyama and began to look for the princess. After five or six days, he was exhausted, but he was determined not to go back until he found her. At that time, he unexpectedly heard the voice of a woman reading the sutra. Teikonori, who had disguised himself as a hunter, followed the voice, carried by the wind and climbed the mountain, until he reached a place where the peak split into two. On the left side there was a large cave, and he could see clearly the figures of Princess Hughes reading the sutra and Yatsufusa listening to her. Teikonori adjusted the gun on his shoulder, lit the fuse, and aimed at Yatsufusa's head. He fired with a bang, hoping to shatter Yatsufusa's body and bones. His aim was accurate. Teikonori jumped with joy and crossed the river, leaping over the hill, and reached the cave. He was stunned when he stepped into the cave. He saw the bloody bodies of Yatsufusa and Princess Fuse. Teikonori Kanameri, who was shocked and astonished, hurriedly lifted the princess's body and shouted, Please, princess, hold on. Your wound is not deep. He quickly took out the medicine from his pocket and treated her. But Princess Fuse's body became colder and colder, and she finally closed her eyes. Teikonori cried out, Ah! and looked up at the sky. Now he had no choice but to end his life with seppuku and follow the princess. He bowed deeply to the direction of Takeda Castle, far away, and said, I have done everything wrong. Please forgive me for my incompetence. He drew his sword and threw it, and was about to stab himself in the side, when an arrow flew at his right elbow. Teikonori dropped his sword involuntarily, and at the same time, a voice said, Wait, Teikonori, wait a moment. He looked and saw his lord Yashizane Satami and his favorite retainer, Sedeyuki Horiyuchi, coming out of the shadows. Teikonori could only kneel before his lord. Sedeyuki Horiyuchi silently walked to the sutra desk and picked up the farewell note left by Princess Fuse. He handed it to Yashizane, who nodded solemnly and read the letter from his beloved daughter. His eyes were filled with tears of a warrior. Teikonori felt like he was dead and said, It was my gun that took the princess's life. I am sorry for being late to die. He explained with tears how he had shot Yatsufusa and accidentally killed the princess. Yashizane said, Think of it as fate. Even if your bullet had not hit her, the princess would not have lived. This farewell note is the best proof. He said with deep resignation. Then Sedeyuki Horiyuchi said, Let us pray to the gods and Buddha for the sake of the sad princess, once more, together. The other two agreed. Yashizane, with fatherly love, took the crystal rosary that hung around Princess Fuse's neck and recited the name of the Enojioja with a serious voice while playing with each bead. Then a strange thing happened. Princess Fuse, who was supposed to be dead, suddenly woke up and opened her eyes quietly. Oh, Princess, are you awake? This is Princess Fuse. I am your father, Yoshizane. Yoshizane followed Takeyoshi and said, and Princess Fuse came to her senses and bowed her head, crying bitterly.
Don't cry, princess. Come with me and return to the castle of Takeda. Your mother is waiting for you there. No, I will not go back. You can see from these dirty clothes that I am a woman who lived with a dog. How can I return to my mother with this defiled body? I have made up my mind since I wrote the farewell note. This is it, Princess Fuse said, and without hesitation, stabbed herself in the stomach with a sword. But then a second miracle happened. A white smoke rose from Princess Fuse's wound, and before they knew it, it wrapped around the crystal rosary. Look, the rosary flew up to the sky. It must be because of the white smoke. It's true, it's flying up like a bird. What will happen next? As the three of them looked up at the high point, the string of beads was cut off in the sky. The small beads fell to the ground as they were. But the eight beads engraved with the characters Jin, Jai, Rei, Chi, Chu Shin, Ko, and Tai emitted a strong light and scattered in all directions. The three of them were so dazzled by the beauty that they stared at the direction of the beads. Then Princess Fuse looked up at their faces as if she was happy and quietly died. My lady, I am so saddened by your death that I will enter the Buddhist priesthood right now. I will shave my head and comfort the spirits of you and Yatsafusa. Takenori Kanamari, who once tried to commit seppuku, shaved his head on the spot and became a monk, changing his name to Chude by breaking the character for dog. He was later called Chude Osho. This monk, wearing a black robe, set out on a pilgrimage across Japan to search for the eight beads that flew high in the sky and scattered in four directions. This is the end of this episode. These people are strange, leaving the fallen princess alone and watching the ball flying in the sky. But it's an old story, so maybe their senses are different from modern people. This is a very long story, and I will take a break from it. I plan to make next episode at some point. Next time I will introduce other stories. In this channel, I would like to share you Japanese stories. To ensure you don't miss any updates about Japanese stories. Hit the subscribe button and drop a comment saying, I've subscribed. And don't forget to hit the like button too. Thanks for watching this video. See you next one.